Good morning, everybody. This is going to be a very rough recording. We're going to be testing out what I like to call the GM's game of 20 questions. You know, L5R, especially in its fifth edition, has done an outstanding job of making you feel very invested in character creation and your characters. It's got a very involved process. And I wanted to create something similar for the game master where they can feel that uh, as involved in the creation of the campaign while also uh, keeping a lot of the player input in mind from what their answers to their questions are. So it creates this like feedback loop that helps the game master plan. Anyway, hope you enjoy it. Hopefully that makes sense by the end of all this here. I'm expecting for this probably to take about three hours altogether. However, I will be cutting out sections where the players are making their own characters, for example. I'm not really going to include that, but I will be including pretty much all of the Game Master's 20 questions in here for things that I won't include. It'll probably be a lot of the end stuff where that's just getting into some of the Lazy Dungeon Master material from Slay Flourish. And there's videos on that too. And I can include that in the description for uh, the show notes. But really appreciate you watching. Hopefully you learn a little something. Hopefully you get excited for what this resource could provide for you. And be sure to hit me up if you have any feedback, if you have any questions. Let's go. We got here uh, some of the court games people. We've got GD, Mike, and Tyler. Hello. 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 Pleasure having you guys around. This is pretty exciting for me. And really glad we get to you know, chat and hang out. Today we are going to be talking about the Game Master's Game of 20 Questions. And the deal about this workbook is, as we all were pretty familiar with the 20 questions, which have been around since first edition, I believe. It's very involved. You end up leaving with a character that you feel like you know them. They're like a buddy of yours. They exist in this world. Of course, depending on how much work you put it to, you could just answer with bare minimum information if you want to. But the Game Master's Game of 20 Questions, this workbook, is meant to help the Game Master also be just as involved and invested in the creation of their campaign. What we'll find as we go through these questions is both the Game Master's workbook and the player's 20 questions, they inform each other. So as we go through each complete section, it'll inform some of the answers going back and forth between the game master and the players. Does that make sense? That does. Cool. All right. So what I'd like for everybody to do is open up their own 20 questions. This is going to be in roll 20. You'll see there's a bunch of tabs at the top, right? There's one that looks like a chat box, one that kind of looks like two photos. Another one looks like a rolled up newspaper. That's one you're going to want to click on. And I've already got some set up under your name. Character sheet is the tab you're going to want to have selected. And then there's 20 questions on the very far right, kind of in the middle of the screen if you haven't scrolled down at all. Yep. Perfect. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> cool. All right. So we are going to be starting on the GM side with the Game Master's 20 questions. Okay. And the name of the sections are pretty similar to one another. For instance, my part one is core identity, which I believe is also the same as the player's 20 questions. And the core identity for the Game Master's 20 questions is meant to flesh out what in the world are we even playing? What's the concept of this adventure that we're going to be playing together? And then what are the most important things to point out that differentiate this campaign from other campaigns that are in L5R or maybe even in tabletop role-playing games, period, that everybody's just super used to as tropes or just the expectations. Once we have the core identity of the campaign, that's when you start working on the core identity of your characters with keeping these concepts in mind, if that makes sense. And I'm actually going to be post some plot hooks that I have. I really like the marketing that L5R does where each book tends to be catered towards a certain genre of play. So that's what I focus on with these different plot hooks that I have. What I'll do is I'll touch on my Path of Waves concept first, and then the Shadowlands concept after that. Path of Waves, what? I took the hook called Rebellious Youth. 
says you are passing through a village and you're approached by a desperate father in the throes of despair. His daughter ran into the forest after a bad argument. It'll be dark soon. No one else will go because the forest is said to be home to benevolent tree spirits and wolves. But what if the young girl does not wish to return at all? Second is Shadowlands. Tainted provisions is the hook that I took. Accompanying a patrol into the Shadowlands on a mission to find what's rumored to be an ancient jade Tetsubo that an official desperately wants to recover. You're several days into the journey and you discover that your supplies are infested with bugs, fungus. Ugh. It's only your supplies, too. The others help to redistribute resources since it's far too late to turn back in your journey. But who can you trust now? And what if the sabotage goes deeper than you could have imagined? Interesting. For a curse of stone, I chose value of poetry. A famous dragon poet is abducted from court during winter, and a desperate, badly injured Deer Clan spear dancer begs for your help to bring them back. This would be huge for facilitating peaceful negotiations between the Lion and Unicorn clans, but things get complicated when it's discovered that a Scorpion magistrate operating outside of their jurisdiction is the one to blame. And then for Celestial Realms, I chose another forgotten spirit. The Shugenja of the Scorpion Clan has called in favors to have a group of samurai escort her on a journey into the wilderness east of Biden Pass to track down a powerful Nemoranai. The journey is arduous, climbing up the spine of the world mountains, crossing the Lake of Sorrows, devastated battlefields, and a lost shrine containing a forgotten spirit. Kind of Indiana Jones-ish. Nice my Yeah. <laughs> I have the sounds of that one myself. I'm leaning towards... The Path of Ways one. Okay. And then the Celestial Realms one. Amazing. That sounds like being we got a winner. Everybody likes the Celestial Realms one? Yeah. I like it. Cool. Yeah. yeah I, I, I like it. I like Path of Waves second, but yeah. Okay. Path of Waves second. Absolutely. All right. With this concept, talking about Celestial Realm, part of question one is going to ask, what does the daily life of the PCs look like in this kind of campaign? For this, I imagine it's going to be a lot of survival, using your expertise to learn how to feed everybody and find fresh water, effectively keep bears away or whatever is out there. And since this is a spiritual trek, our Shugenja are going to be important here. And some of the battlefields, like that brings images of Toshigoku to mind, maybe some mm -hmm. taint from that realm. And the scope of the story, this is very zoomed in. This is going to be focused more on your individual journey here and what you find out there, what the actual magical weapon is or item. I don't know if it's a weapon or not. Uh, we'll have to figure that out together. And I think that's really neat. It's not like the fate of the whole world is in the balance, at least initially in this. The tone, I think that's up to us, but I feel like... Maybe this is less on the silly side, at least. It seems a bit more serious. Injury and death may be on the line. Not sure what other kind of tones to bring up in this kind of situation. Yeah, definitely, like, I have the big feeling of the wilderness survival. Taking more of the courtly samurai out of their comfort zone. Yeah, like a fish out of water kind of situation. I really like that thought. Yeah, maybe a lot of the individuals in the party could be um, pampered individuals. They're all nobles here, perhaps, and not used to roughing it in the wilderness and climbing tall mountains. I really like that. And that also sounds like a theme, too. Theme is something optional that's mentioned in this workbook as bringing up a big question that perhaps we want to see answered through this adventure. And maybe that question is, what happens when you take a bunch of nobles into the wilderness for them to fend for themselves. Granted, you guys are all capable, but this is a different situation. And mind you, this is just spitballing, and in no way is this carved into stone. Anything could change. And I suppose I should mention, too, that part of the what is your initial concept stuff also be going over some of the like player consent checklist stuff. I haven't decided to do that with us because we're short on time. But that would be going over questions of what kind of social issues do you want to include in this game, mm. including things like racism, uh, sexism, things like that. 
So we're blowing past it uh, just for the purposes of demoing this worksheet. But for anybody who's watching this, yes, that is absolutely important. There's actually a link in the workbook that you can click on for the player consent checklist. Highly recommend that for your session zero. So that's the initial concept. Hopefully it helps get some gears going for what kind of character you might be thinking of. Next on the GM side is going to be, what are the six truths of this story? And what that is asking is what are six different things that separate this campaign or this story from what you might ex experience typically in 5R or typically in a tabletop role-playing game, things that your players wouldn't generally expect. And we can work on that together. If you're looking for suggestions, one that just came to mind is that there is a rival group also going and hunting down that same artifact. Going along the same lines of Indiana Jones, where both Jones and the Nazis were chasing down the Ark of the Covenant at the same time. Sorry, spoilers for a 20 year old movie now. My, something similar in that regard. You could have just a, a rival group chasing it down and the players don't know about it until you come across either their tracks or them themselves. Yeah, I really like that. And that puts more of a, a time pressure and time constraint on the party itself. You just can't hang out in this one area for longer. Otherwise, the other group will grab the, the Normani. So for our characters, this is a little tricky because the adventure works, but if we're using uh, Celestial Realms as a source book, it doesn't necessarily lean towards this kind of character. But if we were going to go with the cool Indiana Jones template, we could be not expecting something supernatural to happen until something does. Okay. If that makes sense. My immediate character idea for this, essentially a Ronin who knows the way and is rough and ready and is completely pragmatic, doesn't believe in weird spirits and magic and nonsense, but they're just trying to get people, these idiots through the very dangerous wilderness. And there are a bunch of idiots who, yeah, that kind of thing. I'm the practical one with all these pie in the sky, mystical types. That makes sense. First impulse for me is the opposite of what Mike is thinking. I actually, cause I haven't gotten a chance to play a character like this in, a, in quite some time. I want to play a, a Moshi, Sen oh, yeah. Sentinel, but instead of being the more practical kind of Shugenja. There are the ones that are the Heidi flighty ones. It's like, oh no, I get to talk with God herself. Why do I need to go off into the wilderness kind of deal? The reason I'm amused is I, I came into this thinking that I thought it would be fun to play a, a Daidoji saboteur or a Ronin who used to be one and got caught and now they have to be a Ronin or, but could be a Daidoji boost, more, more practical person myself too so i was like that could be amusing to play this celestial kind of a game practical characters if okay that's the case and that's the way we wanted to go with our group i do have a secondary option that i was thinking and it would be interesting to see how it would work in a mountainous terrain but i've always also wanted to play the shinjo outrider and just have my horse with me everywhere including very steep cliffs of a mountain I, I, I like the, you know, there's someone who's been like, I've been playing this character the whole campaign and we've just been in the same court and I just, they can't take my horse anywhere. And they finally said, we're going into the mountain. Yes. Into the mountains. No, <laughs> that's what we're doing. Does that throw you off completely, Seabass, and then have the Shugenja be an NPC? No, not at all. In fact, yeah, that's exactly right. The Scorpion Shugenja is the one who's asking for help anyway. And I think you know, the Path of Waves book is like another core book in and of itself. I really don't mind including that. And there is a lot of wilderness focus too in Path of Waves. You're absolutely right. With that, I'll also change up just a tiny bit and see if it fits. Because there's one type of class or one type of school I've never gotten to play. And that is an, a, a proper artisan. And so the, the mm, artisan yeah. of the road was one that I'm might go along with, because this is something that they're used to traveling and such, and they're used to making things on the fly, if you will. Why would that individual be 
accompanying a Shugenja up the mountain. If you wanted to do this, if you wanted to do that, the scorpion hires the... Okay, I played High Women. There was an artisan of the roads in High Women that was a, a Brooke Kuhlman class. You could actually play artisan of the roads who was hired as a servant and is just incredibly practical and solves every problem. It just... They didn't care about their specific skills, but you have specific skills. Anyway, that's one way you could do it. Thinking about it, it was like, yeah, if you're going to find the Niramani, it's possible to say, hey, you want a, a, a craftsman to look yes. over the item? Not even this or that. We are going to need to make something to bring it back in. But right? we don't know what it is yet. We are, or, or we don't know exactly what condition it is. We don't know if there's something that's already there. We are going to want someone because the kind of, I'm, I'm thinking of the, the kind of things you put your relics in. We're going to make a reliquy. And so we're going to need someone there on site because we don't know necessarily how big it is or what condition it's in or where it is. And so, yes, yes. So you're going to go there and we're going to make the whatever to carry it. There you go. That makes sense. So the spiritual matters are very subtle until like the end when they're blatantly up. And then we could even have fun. We're our, we're our terribly practical character. Have to deal with this nonsense that is completely outside of their, their, their wheelhouse. I like that. Uh, yeah, we are Path of Waves characters in a Celestial Realms adventure. Exactly. Because this is the way I, I think of things is I see the idea of the, the campaign. And then I see what kind of class I would want to play. And then start working backwards from there. So that's why I was like, oh, I could play this, I could play this, and then start working out the details later. Uh, yeah, I just, I just think, uh, yeah, yeah, I think. So long yeah. as we're, we're all these people that this Scorpion Shigenja would logically hire, and I think yes. that'll make Oh, maybe I should put that perhaps we're interested in collecting this Nemorani for ourselves? Maybe. I, I think that's a good personal decision as opposed to a group decision. <laughs> We could believe or come to believe during the course of the adventure that maybe the scorpion is not the best person to have it. Okay. And, and, well, also, because if we're all playing Path of Waves characters, we may start off like, this is all above our pay grade. We're just going to do our jobs. And so the idea of us deciding who should get it and who should not, that's going to take us a while to get to that. What, why is that really a decision we should be making? Is it fair to say, as Ronan, that... You took this job because you need the money. But what if it turns out that Nemorane is actually like going to be, the, your, that's going to make your dreams. All I'm saying is we're Ronan and that one Nemorane might just be the key to getting into a great clan and, and getting the light. You just present it to just the right person. Maybe you, you get invited into the clan. Yep. But then again, like with the Scorpion, I think it's probably more interesting in it is unknown whether or not the scorpion is shifting because in many ways, the, the most worrying thing is a scorpion who isn't shifting. Like who might, who might genuinely be doing what they're doing for the, the reason they're saying they're doing it. And that in many ways or they, can be more worrying than the sneaky devious right. person who's got a cunning plan. Or there could be hints that the scorpion is like worse than scorpion. But scorpion chicken just shows up. It's hired us. And all we know about them really is that they've got their bonds and they've got money. Which is fine. But during the course of the adventure, it's, oh my gosh, this guy is really bad. Or we don't know. And, and that could be even worse because, like, they could be normal Scorpion Shifty. They could be absolutely upfront and genuine, which would be a bit weird. Or they could be something worse. And we just don't know. I will say there is going to be a chance later in these 20 questions where you'll be able to assign advantages and disadvantages to NPCs. And so I think at that point, we can talk specifically about who we're escorting here. But I think having it be general world knowledge that the Scorpion have a history mm -hmm. and there's rumors even on top of that, that they yeah. might not be the most trusted individuals to take up a job like this. That, that seems reasonable. That works. That and then we have reason to want to necessarily take it for ourselves. Take it for myself. Mm -hmm. It's better for me <laughs> than whatever they're going to do with it. Exactly. The scorpion's going to use it for their own means anyway. How selfish. I can make better 
genuine use of this. Cool. I like it so far. We still have two more slots for truths. Maybe we can say something about the wilderness. Let me see. The wilderness is broadly undersurveyed, or there's just not a lot known about it. Well, I think that pretty much, yeah, the wilderness is in, we will eventually leave all, all the beaten tracks. Even folks like the, my idea of a character who's like the experienced wilderness guy, there'll come a point where it's like, yeah, even I don't know where we are, or even I don't know this area. Ooh, and it's easy to get lost. Okay. And we can ax that for something else if that's not quite informative to your character selections down the line here. One more. If I, I'm, you said Indiana Jones, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it. The artifact itself is somewhat known as Ooh, being okay. of great spiritual or, you know, great significance. So if one of us did make a scholar, we would know about it. Or even as Ronan, we have a chance of knowing something about it. Everyone knows the Ark of the Covenant. It's known, at least somewhat, and this is like, how on earth are we involved with this? Anyway, but we don't find out necessarily what's being looked for until after we're hired. Yeah, I like that. And and depending on how we want to flavor question four or the, you know, could depend on then how you react to what it is. Is it a great evil artifact? Is it a great good artifact? Is it what whatever it is? Yep. I really like that. So, like, basically, everybody's going in this, like, dreaming children. Wow, what could it possibly be? I bet it's something amazing. And meanwhile, the Scorpion Shugenja is probably, it's not going to be anything like that. <laughs> but whatever. Children. That was just a thought that doesn't necessarily have to be it, but <laughs> just funny. All right, Pathways Core Book, of course, and Celestial Realms. I think in this case, though, we're focusing on Path of Waves. And unless, Tyler, were you going to be a Ronin or are you going to be uh, the Moshi after all? I'm going to be the Ronin. Yeah, I, there we go. I like the idea that we, uh, we have taken the hook from the Celestial Realms, but not using it. <laughs> well, no, we are using it, but it's like literally Path of Waves playing a Celestial Realms adventure. Yeah, and yeah. Part of the part of the fact is we're not actually really suited for what the adventure is going to end up being. Mm -hmm. I think is going to be maybe that's one of the truths. We we're not re if it's not already there. That's part of it. That we're not actually quite suited, and that's kind of yeah. How cool is that going to be? We're we're going to be working off of two different books, so I don't have to worry about you guys reading the stat blocks at the end. You need to be nowhere near it. <laughs> cool. Mm -hmm. So that is going to satisfy questions two and three and also the rest of part one core identity and that means you guys are clear to start on your core identity for your 20 questions all right so to touch base on some initial pc concepts as i'm moving into my part two not to rush you guys or anything whatsoever by no means so mike you're playing a scouty fighting ronin yep scouty hunter so probably not your best frontline fighter, but you think of the bow and arrow running class or school? Something like that, maybe. Yeah, Legolas. No, he's far <laughs> too refined. Legolas was a prince, and I think Jenny, you're still deciding on yours. I'm still deciding. I'm torn between. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, treasure hunter. Ooh, okay, uh, that's perfect for. Uh, yeah, that would be a pretty talky one, but. Treasure hunters are better courtiers than they are Pucci, but still, they would be running in this this vein. True. You can buy Kenjutsu like everyone else. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a thing. I've gone about on about this before. Just because just, just your character says scholar or courtier or whatever, and doesn't get kata, doesn't mean they can't fight. No, it's fine. I was just uh, treasure hunter are pretty balanced, but. Because their technique is broken, it makes me, yeah. Broke is broken in a good way or a bad way? Oh, in a good way. If you want to go to court. Oh, okay. Now, I... another thing to, I'm so sorry to cut you off, Mike, but one more thing no, to consider no. too yeah. is we could modify the six truths to make it to where courtiers have more clear direction on what they would be doing in a party like this. Maybe there are guardians who need to be, that's one of the questions is, is maybe there's someone who needs to be convinced. Or we have, there are people we are going to need to ask favors of or directions of. Yep. There's no doubt why a treasure hunter would be 
brought mm, true. And this is what I right. do. But so it's not like a matter of why would ha- there be one in the campaign. It's just yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm not too overly worried about it. I don't know what rank we're going, but it's fine. I think treasure hunter is fine. So I, I would a, a little interesting on mine for my first question. I went urban region up region. So grew up on the streets, which actually leads to my family upbringing of street urchin. Makes sense. You're taking a big risk going into the wilderness. It's definitely not your forte. But I figured this was going to be a new kind of way of handling this because now I am just still an artisan of the roads, just not the normal road that you would think of. Makes sense. Okay. I am making a forest region fallen noble upbringing. Ooh, nice. Yeah, because I always make cranes, so why not? Ended yeah. up in the Shinoman. Cool. Being looking for lost stuff. So. It, it goes well with the whole mm. treasure hunter thing. I have to think more about the background, eh? Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Uh, okay. The only required questions for now is just one and two. And then if you want to think about your right. school, you can. That's optional for right now. What I'd like to offer yeah. is you guys can take a... We'll say five to ten minute break, and then I can start jotting down who are the movers, which is the next section, which is a GM only section. Perfect. Okay. So feel free to continue with your section two and finish that out. Since I have your initial player character concepts, I'm working on what's called the movers, which you may be familiar with the term movers from the Courts of Stone book. They're the big forces that push forward the plot, which is typically something only player characters can do. So as you can see here, I am currently starting to write out the movers. We've written their positions within Rokugan. We've written their ninjo, and we've written their giri, and how their giri will conflict Dang. with other ninjo for the other player character. 30. Next, we're going to be writing how does the <laughs> progress of their giri influence the setting. And this is the immediate setting, since the scope is just the players and the mountain that they're traveling through. So now we're going to move on to who are like, yeah. other interested parties. Imagine three or five secondary NPCs that will assume passive roles in the story. They're not going to have any influence on the plot. Oh, yeah. The purpose of my part three, the strengths and weaknesses, which is also the title of, of yours, is going to be focusing on the NPCs rather than the PCs. However, yeah. as the players, you guys can invest or create interest in these NPCs by helping me assign certain traits to them. And even bonds, too. You might gain some free bonds. Ooh. So let me know when you guys are at a good stopping point. Finish part three. I was working on four. I'm on question, oh, sir. Part three. Starting part three. Okay. So I'm following Noble. Was a samurai now Ronan was gonna go with a desertion as the Giri problem. What do you think about my character being stationed on the edge of the Shinoman and disappearing into it for a couple of years and suddenly coming out and no time has passed? That's pretty cool. So you have this whole experience with another spirit realm? Maybe it doesn't remember any of it. Or maybe from your point just of view. Like, I just walked into just, the woods. I, yeah. Yeah. I wandered back out and it was five years later. Uh, maybe right. something and happened those five years. Loser. Or maybe nothing did. Maybe you literally just got lost and you ended up five years later than you started out. I bet that would create some interesting Joe. Yeah. So, you know, post. Don't know what happened. But are you okay with that? As the. My family, of course. I'm Ronanized now. It's. I got Paul and Noble as my background. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. I like the potential okay. that comes out of that. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to run it by you because it seemed like it could be linked interestingly into this campaign. Oh, yeah, for sure. For mine, uh, I think I've come up with a good hook. So I went with debts to pay. So I need to get some, uh, some more money to pay off my debts here. Uh, so this is a good reason to get hired on or potentially... The scorpion has called in favors to basically call me in, essentially, so without having to pay me. So if you want to go the sketchy route, that's certainly a way to do it. Very cool. Um, but if they want to, if they want to pay me, I am more than happy to take their money. 
There you go. I went with a Nino that was linked to that background. Could It's not on the list, but could I pick one that was find out what happened or regain that memory? I think so. I think there, the cool thing that kind of came to mind is what if this job is also a pilgrimage for you, a way for you to reawaken those memories by getting yourself involved with spiritual matters? Or the Scorpion promised is a Shigenja, right? Yes. That's the Scorpion promised to do something. I don't know what. I'm not a, I'm not a, um, Shigenja to find out what happened. He will call on the spirit. That's how he's going to pay me. I like that. Cool. Something like that. Not that, yeah, whether he really will or can, doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. What I've gone with here, in this case, my family are living up in, well, my family and or friends or the or orphanage or whatever it is. They're up in the mountains somewhere and they're constantly needing extra stuff. Or, so that's why I'm hiring myself out. That is, I'm, I, I didn't take as a, a standard ninja. Because they're, they're samples anyway, you don't have to take. Yeah. Mine is he just wants to be able to live up in the mountains with his family. That's <laughs> okay. all he wants. But he's constantly having, cause, because there are always problems or there are people trying to turf them off. or So he very rarely gets to actually spend time doing that. Very cool. I like that. I'm going to start posting into the chat on Roll20. It's going to take a little bit of time because I have to write it all down. But it'll be the different NPCs that I've made so far. I'm not going to say which ones are movers or which ones are secondary NPCs. And I'm going to put their geary down. And then I'm going to leave it up to you all to choose some positive traits for at least one character. As that would be an advantage that we could even make, if you're wanting to, have your character be aware of that advantage and have some kind of tight history with that. You'll see what I mean here shortly. All right. So we got six different NPCs. And whoever would like to go first you would choose one npc to add an advantage to and optionally you can write down a connection to your character meaning that you're aware of this advantage and you have some kind of history with it all right so it might require me remembering what advantages are in. and it doesn't have to be any listed specific one we don't even need to worry about what the mechanics are right away we can keep it very broad and figure out the mechanics later i can do that off the table I've got one that that might fit and might be interesting. Cool. If nobody has any any qualms about it, uh, I would like to put the advantage on the Scorpion Governor. Nice. Okay. And okay. the Scorpion Governor, I want to give them a passion for sake. They enjoy their drink, but that's a good in with the Governor themselves. And is your character aware of this? All right. Uh, oh, yes. Ah, uh, okay, cool. How did they become aware? Or how, what are the tales that they've been told? Well, the governor loves their sake to the point where it is a open secret that they commonly import their sake from other clans, specifically not Scorpion clan sake. They like sake of other clans. And so whenever a sake merchant of another clan comes in that... The governor's got something planned, either some sort of feast or part of a festival. There's always something that the governor has got going on. Being a street kid like yourself, have you been involved in like procuring or delivering something to uh, that nature? Procuring? Yes. Purchasing? No. That was a, a very fine uh, night that the kids had. Oh, okay. So you played <laughs> a little bit of Robin Hood then, huh? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, except it was not for, uh, it, it was not for the best intentions. I like that. I, it brings a picture of mind where if you're talking about this Lord and you want to leverage this advantage in like a conversation of somebody who works for them, you can either low key say, I know this is a fact and I could blackmail them if I wanted to, but I know how dangerous that sounds, but there's gotta be a, a context where that might be applicable. Oh, uh, or dealing with that Lord personally, which that, maybe a thing. That sounds, yeah, that sounds a little less like making it an advantage, I have to say. Uh, personally, that's one of my favorite things about the system is the ability to flip a, a passion on its head yeah, yeah, yes. or even an adversity around as well. Like I'll, I'll play a scorpion one of these days. 
<laughs> yes. Jeannie, Mike? I've got one for the Shigenja. I right. think that the court Shigenja should have blackmail on someone, which is why they're getting this and why they look like they might be sketchy. You can get specific with it if you like. So maybe they could have, I was thinking that at first that they could have blackmail on the crane since my character was from that clan. They could know about it. Or they could have a uh, blackmail on the governor, or they could have blackmail, something like that, where it starts to, I was thinking that that is an advantage because make them a little sketchy. Yeah. I will also say from what you are told, as far as why the scorpion doesn't have an entourage of other scorpion samurai with them, is they couldn't mm -hmm. get others in the scorp or in the scorpion to support traveling into the lion land, since this portion of the pass is owned by lion. Maybe they have blackmail on the lion. Like a prominent lion lord? Or a prominent lion lord may be uh, in charge of this particular area. Ooh, so that's like why that. they can go through. They have blackmail for our reasons of their own. They don't necessarily want to uh, give that yeah. get up. Yeah, absolutely. They, they don't want to tell the rest of the scorpion that for some reason and, and have it. They've got their own thing that they want to do. So they're using their blackmail to get through this region. I like that. How's that? That's yeah. a good advantage. Her. I could see that advantage coming into play as like an ace up the sleeve if some Lord guards uh, are patrolling the area and saying, hey, get out of here. This is our lands kind of thing. Or let us take you to our Lord for questioning kind of thing. Oh, yeah. yeah or it. maybe they've already procured as a result of their blackmail a travel paper or a yes, he may go where uh, he is. Yes. Yep. I like that. Yep. Get out of jail free card. Uh, yeah. You will do whatever this person says. Mm -hmm. He's already procured that as part of his blackmail mm -hmm. before he begins this adventure. Did you want to tie that to your character? Uh -huh. Yeah. I do in that I want to have some sort of obligation for this person towards my character, maybe for giving them the blackmail material or something like that so that Oh, I see. Yes, I want some kind of goddess. So, so I, I gave them either the item or the piece of information that they could use then to blackmail it. I didn't necessarily know what it was, but I was like the missing piece that put it all together. That's Still amazing. trying to wrap it back into this story. So if I went back with my disappeared to the Shona, Shinoman, they found me... But maybe that was, and my patrol that I was with got attacked because I wasn't keeping guard because I disappeared. That's the yeah. assertion, right? Yeah. Maybe they were attacked by this lion in a legal confrontation. Maybe the, the lion did something bad in that, in that attack. And so when my character comes out and it's all gone, you know, they're the only one who survived it because... They weren't there, but they remember what it was they were on about. Has some information that is enough to know that it was not an imperial approved attack and it was dishonorable in some way. Get so, crimes if there's been how one. far? How far back? Basically, base basically, then my character's memory loss. How long they were in there just depends on how long ago you wanted this to happen. And then a couple of years of being a Ronin afterwards. Cool. Yeah. Sounds. If it was five years in the blink, maybe five years prior or something to that. Yeah. So that would be seven years prior. And, and if I was five years in the blink and then two years since being a Ronin, about seven years ago. Okay. Sounds good. This sounds like a story. Cool. I like that. Mike, who are you thinking? The Forgotten Spirit. Ooh, interesting. See through the eyes of any creature in its realm and possibly plants as well. But we don't know anything about that because we don't even know there's the Forgotten Spirit because we have forgotten about it. Maybe all-seeing eye or something like that. All-seeing eye of the mountains. I like that. Many spies. Oh, but that's actually an advantage, isn't it? Many spies. Something like that. Anyway, does your character have any connection to that advantage? 
I'm going to go with no, because I've not been up to that point in the mountains and it's a forgotten spirit and therefore we've forgotten it. If there's a connection, I don't know about it. Cool. Okay. And now in a similar fashion, we're now going to assign disadvantages to each of these characters, one per player. And I would say, try to choose a NPC that you haven't chosen before. Don't push yourself too hard if you can't really think of anything. Something about them always irritates spirits around them. And they don't know why, and they don't know what it's about. It's all such a little tiny annoying thing that's just always happening and just gets in their way, especially because they're trying to learn what's going on. Okay, so it's like an annoying presence to the spirits? Yeah. Interesting. So like they're maybe their soul or something. It's just very loud to the spirits, very annoying. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it may even be that they've their whole life in the city. But actually their ancestry were like the people who used to live up in the mountains all the time. So the spirits really love him and they think he's amazing. And it's great that he's back, but they just don't know how to communicate. So it's just loads of annoying things. It's showing up and bugging him. Oh, the accolade is annoyed by oh, the oh, Yeah, yeah. She, yeah, yeah. The, the accolade oh, okay. is always just really being bugged by the, by spirits. Things are always going wrong spiritually around them. And it may be, actually end up being positive or may end up being a negative thing. Interesting. Yeah. I really like that. I don't think of that more thought. Uh, did you want your character to have any uh, history or tie no. to them? If we're going with the, the spirits really like them because actually their ancestry used to be all living up the mountains and they actually are attuned with the mountains. They just don't realize it. That this could act, this person could actually end up being part of my family in a sense, or they're part of whatever group I used to be, my, my family's part of. Ooh. But again, it's something he wouldn't know just now. It's something that would, that would eventually come to light. So we're thinking like a, either a distant cousin or somebody who had once studied under yeah. the sensei a while ago, and there are still yeah. stories about their hardship or their folly. Yeah. Or, or, you know, my, my family are the last remnants of some people who always used to live up the mountains a uh -huh. long ago. And so is the spiritual acolyte. It's just that they moved. So yeah, distant cousin would be. I like that a lot. Okay. So my idea for the mercenary boss is that the mercenary boss has an incurable illness. Okay. And so that they are, they look fine, but they're actually like desperately hunting for a cure or to make sure things get set up for their people after they pass away or something like that. It could go either way. Either they're trying to search for a cure for themselves or they're trying to get their band of people set up for life because they know they're going to die soon. I like that a lot. In fact, yeah, that really speaks well to the ring, Joe, too. That's cool. Not that the Ninjo's posted. Yep. That's for my information mm. only. But uh, does your character have any history with this? Or do you want to make any ties to your character? I do want to make a tie to my character, but I don't want to, it to necessarily be directly with this potentially. I think at some point in the last two years, my character and this character have been competing for something because I'm a treasure hunter and they're doing this sort of thing for glory or competing for money <laughs> in the last few. Well, actually, which is more interesting. We can have it like that or this boss could have helped to get my character up on their feet right afterwards. So it could be, what you think? Like a mentor kind of thing. Once upon a time or a comrade, once upon a time. But it's, they had lost touch or they fell out of touch. Maybe they're, my character is just not willing to do the things that they're willing to do, but they, they lost out. That could be interesting. That could be very interesting. Very that that creates a very three-dimensional kind of character with the good and the bad together, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So very early on, they, you know, they were able to help my character get started as a Ronin. They were a deserter and on the run and all that stuff, but they had a big, huge falling out, maybe disagreeing on methods or something like that. And my character left and is no longer in the pack. Maybe they know about the illness, maybe not, but that's, I like that. That's, that's got layers. It's an onion. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, it is absolutely an onion. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. I'm um, going the okay. other direction. That would have probably been a bit more one note. It does fit completely with their ninja, the other option that we we're thinking of, but 
Mm-hmm. I like this one a lot better. I like the mentor nice side okay. of them. Okay. And Tyler. Just to fill out every character in this regard, I've got one for some muscle. There been, there's been some some rumors going around that uh, this person is extremely cruel to uh, their mercenaries. There are whispers of cruelty going around. Okay. Uh, maybe towards the mercenaries themselves. It may be towards, towards the enemies of the mercenaries. It's a, a little vague in that regard. We just know that they're extremely... Yeah, absolutely. Did you want your character to have a tie to this disadvantage? Only in, in passing knowledge. Mm. Not, I don't know them specifically. I just know that's the word going around. It may not even be true. Yeah, Wisp, Whispers of always has that thing of, but it could be lies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, word of the ruthless mercenary who carries yeah. a big hunk of iron and calls it a sword. No. Uh, but is in fact a complete lovely person. <laughs> That's cool. Cool. So now the last part for these NPCs is we can establish some existing relationships. One player at a time, they're going to choose either two NPCs or one NPC and themselves. Then they can form a bond and describe the kind of relationship that these two characters have. Okay, I'm going to go with a possibly a very silly one. Let's go. Oh, I, it, it, silly is, is how it, how it turns out. Who should we go with? Let's go with the court chikenja and the mercenary boss. Interesting. Okay. And it was a little while ago, maybe a couple of years ago, maybe a drunken night, an attic nation. They never thought they'd meet again. <laughs> maybe, and they maybe not even realize right now that's who this other person is and they discover it as <laughs> things go on and who knows how it might turn out yeah one thing led to another yeah. that's cool i like that that's going to be very interesting in play <laughs> so i think that bond is former lovers yeah let's go with that i like that cool okay so we're not going to choose the same two npcs let's choose another two npcs somebody else or NPC and PC, yeah. Absolutely. I want to do one between the Scorpion Governor and the Forgotten Spirit. Ooh. Wow. And it is antagonistic. Okay. Back when the Governor was young, they may have attempted to go up the mountain, and the Spirit reacted poorly for some reason and forced the, the Governor down while making its pseudo-presence known. So the governor's done a little bit of, of research on it. And it, yeah, the spirit's bad for everyone involved. I want to get rid of it somehow. Ooh. So, so they are directly antagonistic with each other. That is perfect. Cool. I like it. I like it. All right, Jeannie, what you thinking? There's only two more left if we were doing the NPC to NPC. But we can go ahead and do the... Mercenary boss and IPC is like a full blown bond. We want like rival or ah rivalry. Yes, I think that makes a lot of sense. I will say too. Give it. Sorry, just in case this is important for your decision, that there will be another question later where there's another chance to form a bond with either another player character or with a mentor or somebody who's close to your character. If you want to have a positive relationship mm-hmm. instead, you'll still be able to have these NPCs exist, but to have an official bond with them mechanically. I don't know. We can stick with this rivalry for now. We've it's easy got... to erase it. Yeah. If you want to. So. Okay. Yeah. The other, the alternative is to make it, you know, the only two left is between the muscle and the spiritual acolyte or something like that. And... No, for sure. So I like it. Merc boss and yourself, rivalry, competing mm. for jobs, money. I will. Technically, the relationship would be ex mentor. Yes. It would be a mentor or ex mentor. It's, yeah. it's gone into the sour part. Yeah. No, absolutely. So, technically, the relationship could be mentor. I don't know what it would be. I'd have to look at the bones, but it sounds like a good one. You used to be my teacher, and this is very Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, you used to be my teacher, and but I'm now smart. I don't agree with your philosophy or I don't agree with what uh your lot in life like you've changed man cool really good so i'm gonna move on to my part four 
Are you guys also on your part four? All right, so we're more than halfway done. To be honest, a lot of these questions here that are coming up for part four, these questions are all going to be directly tied to what you guys chose for your answers for your part four. And then after that, it's basically just prep for the GM. That could be a point where we could call it for time. But there is one more question that we'll go through that is in part six when we get there as well. Also, for the listeners here, all up to this part, it's been a sandwich between The Lazy Dungeon Master by Sly Flourish, which I'll put links to in the description for What Are the Six Truths, and then the Mover section, which is direct rules from Courts of Stone on those questions. And then with the next questions that are coming up, this is something that I took from various other resources. So this would be from Primetime Adventures is one example for the very next question that concerns the passions for your, your characters. And then the mentor question and who your character is close with. That's something from, I believe, James' book about the character building guide. So those are some questions that really resonated whenever I read that book and I wanted to include them in this resource. And then it basically flips back over to the rest of Slayer Flourish's Lazy Dungeon Master after that point. All right. The first person to complete their passion sections, let me know and we can start with you. I have a passion. Cool. Are you interested in getting a second passion with question 13? Because the next question we're going to talk about involves creating a location that's personal to you that allows you to access your passion maybe a bit more reliably. Well, Certainly, well, like Agus Ninja is looking after his family. So his family home would be a logical candidate. Oh yeah. Whether he necessarily has a passion specifically related to that. I, I also have a passion, but I will not be taking a advantage in the question 13. Okay. We'll go ahead and start with your son. If that... Sure. So this question is, what is your personal location? So think about how your character might engage in their passion and we'll try to come up with a place together. And since you guys are traveling, this might be a bit more of an abstract location. Okay. So the passion I chose was generosity. Cause kind of thinking back on the story we were telling about the Saki being illegally acquired from the governor and then giving it out to like the kids around everything. It was like, that actually would fit in really well to a not well off artisan who just can't I had thought about doing the Daikoku's a curse and just not being able to keep on to money but I think it's now a willingness to give it away as opposed to a fortune disliking so I, I went with generosity in that regard so I think a so when we say personal place this is does this have to be a a physical location it can be either a physical location a location from your past that you can flash back to if you want to keep it that abstract. Or optionally, if it makes sense, if it's appropriate, it can instead be a personal item related to your passion. Okay. In this regard, I want to go with the local orphanage. Okay. This is a location that was really meaningful to your character that you can reflect on and flash back to in times of big, important meanings. Because the way I'm envisioning it is that this is one of those locations where, yeah, this is an orphanage. Kids come here to, to at least get some sort of an education on how to stick around. But more or less, it's not exactly the friendliest location for kids. So it's a uh, place to sleep. Uh, okay. It, it, it's mostly a place to sleep. But the character grew up in that location. But they're also constantly coming back to the location for any of the newer kids that are there and like sneaking them in like little treats for like an actual meal for someone, for, for a kid that's not doing well. And really plays up on that nature of, yep, this place is not the greatest, but here is something to at least try to ease that along and try to make you feel a little bit better. Yeah, it's such a strong community between the the kids they're basically brothers and sisters and the the master or mistress or whatever you would call someone who runs an orphanage i actually don't know 
they're doing it almost out of a, a sense of duty, not liking. So it's like, yep, I'm here to take care of the kids, whatever kind of deal. Very laissez-faire about it. Mix them. It turns into a Lord of the Flies situation. The kids run the place. To an extent. The adult is the one that's still in charge and still does the discipline and everything. But there's no passion behind it. It, it, it is literally a job for them and they're just done with it. Cool. So they leave, they leave a lot of the, the smaller things to the kids, but anything major, they're like, all right, fine. I guess I'll take care of it now. Like, it's one of those things where the bare minimum is done. It's like, oh, yeah, I need to feed you. Here's some rice. Yeah. You, you don't get anything else. Here's some rice. Anything else is on you, basically. Yeah, absolutely. The kids are definitely a burden to them. Exactly. So to lessen that feeling for the kids themselves, that's where this character comes in. It's like, okay, yeah, I, I, I snuck in a little bit of fish. Here you go. Or like, here's some dongo. Enjoy it. Or, and even to the extent of like, here, this is how you might be able to read. Okay. But this is 100% under the table. My character sneaks into the orphanage to do I like that. But just to, to make sure that this, that nobody has any qualms about this character being a, a good person, I took as one of my disadvantages addiction. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let me ask you here if this is fair. So in these locations, I'll be asking for something that's useful about the location, something you can use, something that's notable, which might be something noticeable that's broadly important. And then something that's important to yourself specifically to your character, maybe I'm not putting these in the right place, but I'm feeling like the strong kinship, like siblings is maybe something that's useful, like a connection you can call upon. Definitely. The inactive master is something that's notable, but not, maybe not important to your character necessarily. They weren't exactly involved in your life. Yep. And maybe an important detail. Is there something that is up here that I'm missing or maybe something you want to add? An important detail. I, is, is this going to be an important detail as for other people to notice or for your something character that's for, specifically for, for my character specifically, uh, I'll tie this in because the headmaster is looking at this as a duty, as a, a burden. And this is where Bushido gets you is Ooh. nowhere in life. Cause my character rejects Bushido completely. I like that. So it is. This is where Bushido gets you is not caring for kids. Okay, fine. I see where this goes. I like that. So the intention behind these three details is something that's useful. Yeah, if you happen to visit this orphanage in person, that means that you have some things you could tie on. Or if you run across somebody who's from this orphanage somewhere in the mountains, that's the obvious get. But it could also mean when you think back to what you've learned from your siblings, perhaps that could be applicable for relieving stress or something. The notable detail about how inactive the master of the orphanage is, maybe that lights a fire under you at some point, or maybe it can remind you how despicable somebody is when you're about to face them down. These can be used in a, a wide number of ways when you're especially doing flashbacks, like what we're looking at. Okay. And one thing that immediately came to mind as like a, a plot hook is that uh, you got these mercenaries. Maybe one of these mercenaries came from the orphanage and knew me. Mm, okay. Yeah. Just, and not necessarily, I didn't have to care for them, but they could have been at the orphanage the same time I was. And it still could be an antagonistic relationship between the two of us. I like that. That could come into play for maybe question 14 as well. Who is your character closest with? Or if they're more of a mentor, who are, is your character's mentor? So mm. we'll come back around to that for sure. Wants to go next for giving a giving a personal location. I mean, the obvious one is, is where my family live. Yes. Basically a clearing somewhere up in the mountains, some old shack, maybe it's an old, it was originally old temple building or something, or was, uh, you know, the remains of an old fortification. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's just enough that you can kind of say, yeah, there used to be a fortification here, but there's enough buildings to, there's a couple of buildings that you can actually live in. And they're kind of lumps and bumps in the ground. So, yeah, there used to be a wall, but it's not anymore. Which passion are you planning on tying this to? My actual, my actual passion that I got from, you know, what activity makes your character feel at peace. I went for animal bond. I couldn't really find one that really stuck or that made sense. So animal bond is a bit of a 
a, a bit of a swerve. We can make a break. Was, yeah, it is about the only one that really made sense. The only other one I can think of that would be is he liked just living in nature, looking after his people, hunting without stress. It is not, yeah. And I don't, we're okay, but it's time to go do some foraging and do some hunting and stuff like that, as opposed to, oh God, oh God, oh God, everyone's starving. Exactly. These are well-cultivated. It's a well-cultivated biome. Well, it, it not, oh, actually it isn't, is the problem, which is why he's always having to go out and get, I mean, it's either, or maybe there are people who are sick or something. He's always having to go out and it, it, it possibly, it could be and should be okay. and some, and maybe it used to be in the past. It could have been because if he was just, it was that nice, he'd never leave. Okay. So perhaps okay. an important detail is this taught you the hardships of trying to survive. Yeah. And it's become his, his responsibility, which possibly he, he had to take on when he was a little too young due to yeah. circumstances. Or maybe that's a useful detail, but you, you can tell me notable detail. Oh, let's go with it. It was very clearly, this used to be an important fortification once upon a time. Yeah. Cool. I like that. And then depending if you want to add a useful detail or important detail, I can move this to whatever you don't use. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Let's do, I'm going to move this and then we can say the, oh, oops. we can say the useful detail is maybe something that was left there, left behind. Okay. So maybe family heirloom could be potentially, and maybe this would be answered by like a heritage role or something, mm. but thinking of like armor, weapon, something that represented the seat of your small family that was passed down for generations. Hopeful past. We'll figure out what that is during play, probably in this theoretical scenario <laughs> where we actually yeah, yeah, play, yeah. but uh, <laughs> yeah. So Jeannie. All right. I took as my passion, my playfulness. He may be basically, they have a, they're pretty good at coming up with the uh, sarcastic comebacks mm -hmm. and maybe they have a sake house or something where they are well liked and everybody knows they roll that way and get into kind of. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just, they get along well and it's basically a, a friendly and good natured sake house in general, uh, you know, cheers bar sort of thing is what I'm thinking of. Knows each other. I don't know. What's a useful detail? Useful detail is that people from that bar trust you. So if you come across anybody yeah. who knows about you, they're like, oh, wow, I know you got a good head on your shoulders or something. Right. And maybe they're also Ronin if with Ronin like fields. So okay. maybe uh, you go there if you need backup. Okay. If they would be willing to come. They aren't too drunk. Yeah, absolutely. In a cutthroat doggy it's dog a kind of world. Little drunk, but Yeah. This yeah. having run it from this bar, trust each other is good. Notable detail, important detail. Uh, Notable is just broad uh, interesting. Important directly to your character. The, this sake house is known for having the tastiest onigiri in the area. Just, if you want the best onigiri in town to go to this sake house. I like it. And what is most important to your character about this sake house? Just as what with a useful detail. The useful detail is it's full of Ronin who'd be willing to throw down if you wanted. The most yes. important detail is that they actually like can trust my character. Okay. Yeah. That they know them and they don't necessarily think that my character is a reputation or something. Interesting. Okay. Cool. I like it. Let's see here. And there's a, they're a deserter anyway, so. Basically. Oh, well, did it cut it off? No. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. So Renna from the Spar will fight for one another. It's renowned for their own Agiri in the area. And people actually trust each other. They don't think you're a coward there. You've had that much needed support. Cool. So I like that. Those are some good locations. Next, we're going to talk about mentors. So this would be your question. Who have you learned from most in life? Well, I can't wait a question for one. My dad. 
who was the previous kind of person in charge of my little group. Awesome. Okay. That's good. Okay. So in this one, the mentor is aware of one of your advantages or disadvantages, your choice. My, my father is not currently with us, if that's important to this next series of questions, why, which is why my character is, is currently the one who is responsible. So he's aware of one of my advantages, he says. Either advantage or disadvantage. I think there's all of them, honestly. Terrible. Damn. The one I get from him is, is Keen Smell, because he's the one who really taught me how to oh, okay. understand the mouth. The Lucky Hunter, Bullheaded, or Animal Bond could all make sense. His anxiety is failure, but that's because he is now the, you know, the, the kind of head of the thing and the one who's responsible. So he has a fear of failure. Yeah. Okay. You said that your character has a fear of failure? Yes. Anxiety is, the anxiety is failure. Specifically failing his family. So we can, since you're under the impression that your father knows about all of your disadvantages, maybe I what's can, one I, that he really I, focused I, on? If it, if it was disadvantages, it would be bullheaded. That would be the one that we've had. And what would be an advantage or disadvantage that you would like to give to your father? One that mm. your character is aware of. Yeah. Wisdom, I think, would be the obvious one. I don't know what that would translate into. Yeah, like life experience was some kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I think seasoned is the advantage that's in. Uh, that is the official one, yeah. I like that. How does your character feel about your father being this seasoned... I was about to say veteran, but that might not be the right word. Yeah. Yeah. This is love and respect and a feeling that you'll never live up to it. Ooh, that's harsh. That's hard. Mm. Yeah. This is, it would be, it's not because like his father's saying that it's because his father's not there and now he's having to take on that role and he doesn't feel that he can, or was, he was worried that he can't. I like it. The other questions might be answered already for this, their relevancy in your life. So maybe they were deeply involved in your life before, but yeah, now they passed. Absolutely. On. Yeah. The ease of contact of this individual, they've passed quite on, but do you pray difficult. to them? I don't think it's a formal ancestor worship thing. No. Okay. That's no problem. What was your father most known for? Being a wise man of the mountains. Nice. Okay. As in, as in someone who can really survive and live well and that sort of thing in the mountains. Yeah, not as in someone you climb up to the top of the hill and ask for wisdom, but the, the person who really knows how to live out up here and thrive and, and live a good life. Yeah. The wild man is mm. known for being raised by wolves or something. Yeah, it's not <laughs> like that. It's still, it's still got like a household and, and, and all that kind of stuff, but he's just wise in the ways of living in the mountains. Cool. And then a good page, good patriarch. So you mentioned that people don't necessarily go up there to ask for his wisdom, but no, we're, we're, we're up in the middle of nowhere. Was there any influence or notoriety for the locals of the mountain or around the mountain? I think there possibly would be known like every so often they come down with stuff that's been hunted and trapped or foraged. Oh, okay. Or, or, or made. And so there, there'll be the occasional trading trips. I like that. His, his, his father would have been known for the person who get stuff from the mountains, guide people. He's possibly, he was one of the, the known guides to the mountains. That's all I right. like that. How does your father see you or have seen or I've seen? Yeah. It was one day, one day, this will be your role, my son, and I will do everything I can to make sure you're prepared for it. Only it all went a bit horribly wrong and he, yeah. he never got to that state. I like it. That's really good. All right. And then Tyler or Jeannie? So which, uh, well, which question would you like first? We'll go with who is your mentor? Who is the person who your character learned most from? So my character who they learned most from was a local beggar, quote unquote beggar, who is a, a, a scorpion actor looking to build up a spy network. Okay. They uh, attempted to hook the character in by getting them addicted to opium. Oh. They partially succeeded. But the actor was recalled away from the local territory. So they just left the character with the addiction and nothing else to sustain them with. That's great. What is an advantage or disadvantage that you were going to give the spy? Is it like well connected or something? Oh yeah. Connect. Like, that's nice. Okay. How does your character feel about 
this advantage for this individual? Oh, it's uh poorly. Talk to me uh, about it. This is what this guy goes around, or this person, I'll, I'll say that this person goes around and does this to just innocent people, gets them hooked on this substance and leaves them that way for life. That's a real bad thing to do. It's so reckless. So reckless, a complete abandonment for try, trying to empathize whatsoever. Yeah, there's there's no reason to do it outside of your own personal gain. And it's, yeah. Yeah, there, absolutely. There are words that could be used that would not be proper for polite conversation. What's the relevancy <laughs> of, the scorpion, uh, of the scorpion in your life, this character? Outside of this major turnaround, not terribly too much. They did teach them how to defend themselves and how to uh, sneak around a little bit more. So instead of being just the regular, uh, just straight up teenage or, or uh, street urchin in this regard, they got a little bit of training from the actor. In this case, a little bit of how to use the knife, how to present yourself in a proper way to other potential clients or victims. And how to listen out for certain important things that might be called upon to, to turn it over. Cool. Very good. How easy would it be to try to find this individual again or to contact uh, it, them in some way? For the character to contact the beggar, near impossible. Okay. For yeah. the beggar to contact the character, extremely easy. Scary thought. What is... I was going to ask, what is the beggar most known for? But maybe what is the scorpion actor side of them most known for within the scorpion or within their network? Within their network, they are very well known for having uh, good contacts along with the, uh, the peasantry. So a lot of the smaller villages around the area of their jurisdiction, they are very well known for... Uh, just having a, a good network of contacts in the area. I like it. So it, it's not necessarily that they're out doing the work. It's that they're able to collect the work of their network. Yeah. They have a nice pool of peasants to use as a resource at almost any given moment. What would you say is their amount of influence within their uh, network, I suppose, or who they work for? Within their network, it's rel It's not small, but it's not the, the a large amount. They're on the, the ladder, if you will. They're slowly starting to build that influence up, but it's not to the point of incredible notice by anyone major. Okay. So they're still building this influence, but they at least have a reputation for being well-connected. And establishing those connections. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Still building, but they have their reputation. That's good. How does the beggar view your character? Expendable. Yikes. <laughs> Nicely put. Cool. Thank you. All right, Jeannie. For my disadvantage, I put cognitive lapses, and I'll say they missed this five years, and they also are missing chunks of what happened before. So they've got some significant memory losses going on from their life prior to being a Ronin. And for their mentor character, then, the most significant mentor character that they have is the bandit leader, or the yeah. whoever our rival is. So, mm -hmm. absolutely. It's just been in the last two years, that's what they've got. They remember some. They're not complete amnesiac or anything, but it's got holes in it. So far, the mercenary uh, has incurable illness. Did you want to assign them another disadvantage right. or an advantage? I will assign them an advantage. Okay. Sounds good. I'll give them the advantage of indomitable. Nice. They'll stop at nothing. I like that. Also might prove that they can take a beating and keep on licking or however that goes. Take a lick and keep kicking. There we go. As as it should be for all good bad guys, right? Yeah, absolutely or, true. Yeah. How does your character uh, feel about this indomitable will of your mercenary lord mentor? They actually really respect it. Nice. That That part of them, a lot of things they do actually very much respect of them. It came down to, because they have Indomitable Will, they would not be persuaded to do what my character thought was right within a given situation. And cool. so they parted ways. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, absolutely. So how relevant is the mentor in your life at this point? Maybe not very much until the adventure starts. In general, I think that it's not too relevant. They have their people. And yes. I'm not going to hang out with their people. We were talking about bonds before with this person, but I don't, I think maybe it's better if they're, they're not actively hunting out my character and my character's not hunting out them. They're just. Sure. Does that make sense? So they're like, this is the cool club and you're not in the cool club. You're out. Yep. But if they ran into each other again, they would probably stop long enough to have words before fighting began. Makes sense. I like that. But fighting might very well begin, depending on how opposed they are. How easy would it be? Absolutely. I agree with that. How easy would it be to contact the mercenary lord at this point? Actually, I think if my character wanted to, they could probably reach them fairly easily. Not immediately, but they know where they hang out and they know what messages to leave for them to initiate a meeting. Absolutely. It could be easy enough to send but, word to where they, they get don't, or to the messengers. They know how to get in contact with them, but they have no desire whatsoever to get in contact with. Them. Absolutely not. What is the mercenary lord most? And I'd know. Could be as immediate as what do their fellow mercenaries think about them? It could be as broad as what does this region think about them? Have they even made a name for themselves? I, th- I think they've made a name for themselves. They are, I guess, let's put it down to, they are, uh, they have a reputation for doing what they are agree to do, no matter uh, what, and no matter the cost on the way. So if, yes, if they are told to clear an area of land of people and they can't scare them off, they will have no qualms whatsoever about killing everybody there. Very cool. They have a reputation for always and maybe finishing that's the job. What, always finishing the job. And maybe there was a job just like that mm. that my characters, no, <laughs> I don't, you can't kill these people. That's rough. Cool. All right. And how much influence does this mercenary lord have? I, I think that it's up to you. Sure. Yeah. 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 I, th- I, I think that they've got, they're still a Ronin. Yeah. But they're. That know, glass ceiling. Or capable. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they've got people who report to them. They've got a reputation of always getting the job done. They, no matter what, which is fantastic for Ronan in terms of advancement. Yeah. But you know uh-huh. what? They'll never be able to hold a castle without samurai rushing in to take them out. Nope. And I don't know what they specifically want. Maybe they've been promised. Oh, they've got their incurable illness anyway. Sure. So they're trying to figure out how to set up their people now. Mm-hmm. So they care about, they care a lot about their own people, but not anybody. Else. My character was one of their own pe- people once. So how does the mercenary lord see you at this point? What is their view uh, of you? Prodigal child. Interesting. Okay. I like that. But, yep. Yeah. Prodigal. Maybe not directly child, but this was one of mine. I I found them. I raised them up. I taught them everything that they needed to know, even though they don't deserve it or whatever. And they just didn't have the guts to Ooh. do what they had to do. And they bailed on me again, going in for the double desertion there. Cause I was thinking about giving them the anxiety battle trauma. Interesting. Being a, this is a character who flinches before fight. Cool. Not to make you put all your eggs in one basket, but there was another question of who's the character closest with, and that can add another disadvantage to them. Uh, this definitely is putting all the eggs in one basket. But... <laughs> That's okay. This is It's a small cast of characters, but honestly, I prefer those kind of stories. What are you thinking? It's not what that... Well, I'm just trying to think about how long it's been since this happened. Oh, sure. And I will say, too, this is... A bit loose. We can still edit it later. What makes the final cut? You know what I mean? This is just us putting down words to paper. Yeah. All right. I don't... Yeah, I see this... My character is being very uh, not attached to anything at this point in general. 
because of, you know, you've got all this, you've got this blackout period, which cut the clan connection. They've got holes in their memory from earlier than that, from the same source, basically, whatever happened in the Shinoma that they don't know about. They were wandering around, basically fleeing, trying to make it as a Ronin. This bandit captain or this mercenary boss person took them in, trained them in the life of a Ronin, and set them up as a member of their squad. They were ordered as a squad to do something that maybe wasn't initially bad, but to get it done, they had to do something very bad. Oh, yeah. And my character refused to be part of it. Oh, yeah. And they had a huge fight, and my character left and has been moving on their own ever since mm -hmm. away from them because they weren't willing to directly confront this mercenary boss guy. Yep. They weren't on off. Yeah. They still have an obligation there, or, but they think they're a bad person. And since then, my characters settled in with, in a town with a sake house and doing jobs around then and just trying to survive. And that's their group. I don't know if I want to say this person's the closest to them. You know, it depends on how long ago it happened, the, the bad thing that happened that, that blew it up. Yeah. Is it like six months ago or it may not be very long. Depends on, I kind of want to put that in your court if that's all right, sir. Oh, sure. Absolutely. How long ha happened. And you tell me, cause that is, sets a time frame for the adventure too. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think. And it goes into his motivation. Yes. I think at least a year to give you enough time to be like, cool. I think I finally escaped. I'm not going to see them ever again. Okay. Yeah. You've already had your chance run-ins with some of your previous colleagues and you think that you've finally figured out where you can have your niche without. That sounds good. And maybe, so that puts the original ambush eight years ago. To, so two years, so eight years ago, they, she was lost in the Shinonoma, was there for five years two years under this guy, and then a year ago, broke up with this guy. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I like that. And, and, then maybe, and then maybe some of his band, who are very loyal to him, feel even more strongly than he does about her going. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Especially the I'm cruel a, individual, maybe. Yeah, I haven't decided on the uh, gender of my character yet. Oh, sure. No problem. All right. So now I want to move on to question 14. Who is the character closest with? If anybody already has an idea of who they want to make the person is closest to them, it can be another player character or it can be a bond with, and it doesn't have to be a bond, but this is a potential to gain one since not everybody has one uh, with a non-player character. If that's the case, I would like to create a bond with an NPC. Okay. Or not necessarily a bond, but a, a relationship of a nature. Sure, absolutely. Now, would you like to use an existing NPC or do you want to make a new one? An existing one. Very good. Which one? The spiritual acolyte. Ooh, okay. Since this character happens to be very superstitious as one of the, the disadvantages, I'll go ahead and tell you right now. My anxiety is superstition and my adversity is uh, Momoku. <laughs> Okay, so which one do you want the Acolyte to know of? The Acolyte will know of the Momoku. I like that. And this is actually, my character goes to the advisor to be like, hey, there's something wrong here, and I don't know what it is. Can you take a look? And that ended up poorly, huh? Yeah, just a little bit. Would you consider that a negative relationship, or was it still a positive one regardless? I'm going to say it is a, ooh, I, I want to do this one more along the lines of a social positive. They can talk and they can get along well with each other, but the advisor knows there's something off, if you will, and is hiding and harboring a, maybe even an unconscious bias against the character. Okay. So it'd be a negative relationship? 
Like again, they can they can go to a a, a sake house and and enjoy sake with each other and and have a good time, but it is one of those things where you can tell when someone's not being fully themselves and they have that, that kind of prejudice and un uh, and, and biased against you. So it's definitely negative, but there's a a veneer of a, a positive attitude between the both of them. Nice. Okay. So is it that you see individuals who are like the spiritual acolyte, you see them as frauds or quags? Not at all. No, no not at all. It is definitely one of those things where uh, this is, the world is as it is, and these are people who are interacting with the metaphysical side of the world. So definitely they are, they're correct. They are, that is how this is. They're truthful and everything. But it's like going to a doctor who already doesn't want to treat you. The same vein, except on a spiritual level. Oh, uh, okay. And it's like, okay. yeah, you can I be like polite, that. you can be professional, but if, if that person doesn't want anything to do with you, there's not much you can do about it. I like that. Okay, cool. And what advantage or disadvantage would you like to give the Accolade? Ooh, for the Accolade. Let me... Currently, the Acolyte has, back up here, Spiritual Acolyte has plagued by spirits begging for help, and that's it. That's the disadvantage. Okay. Then let's give them an advantage to kind of balance things out. Let's give them, oh, I know. Let's give them Ebisu's Blessing. Cool. That's the one where laborers and anybody with a status 30 or lower just immediately trust them. They have that sense of trust with a lot of people, which is one of the reasons why this character went to them. I like it. Absolutely. Cool. And then, uh, Genie or Mike, any character, whether that's a non-player character that exists or is yet to exist, if you want to make a new one or another player character. And of course, this is the opportunity, Genie, where if you wanted to get rid of the previous bond that you had with the Merc Lord, you can switch that to a different character now. No, I think that. The Merc Lord is the, the best bond one way or another. <laughs> Absolutely. I really like it. So then who now is your character closest with? It's been a year. Yeah. Just debating. I really tried to to decide whether to play a male female character because uh, mm. I think it's going to change it because I was thinking maybe they have a lover who is related to child of the owners of the the fucky house. Okay. Yes. Would you say that relationship has been positive or negative? Positive. Cool. I've got a neg big negative relationship, but it's not <laughs> right. that deep. It's not the same as like the bond with the mercenary captain. More complicated, but also deeper. This is a friendly, fun relationship, not a. Yeah, absolutely. I was about to say the word fling. That's up to you. <laughs> it's a fling or. At least yeah. not taking it too seriously. There's a certain aspect of, I'll probably have to move on from here at some point because I'm a Ronin. Yep, absolutely. I see what but, you mean. But, that, but that's why they're, that's why that's their spot. Yeah. Right now. That's cool. I like that. What advantage or disadvantage of yours is this lover aware of? This lover, unlike many, is aware of... Uh, my character's memory lapses. Nice. Okay. So, yeah. How do you think that manifested? Did you, like, maybe they knew you... No, no, no. No, they... No, they, they were lovers, and they're trying to share history. It's like, I don't yes. remember. Okay. <laughs> I like that. I wonder what <laughs> this character thinks of... That's cool. Huh. I don't know what they would think of it, but they're happy in the relation. It's a happy relationship. Yeah. Oh. You could have been somebody important and then you wouldn't even be talking to me but oh yeah i like that but what is an advantage yeah. or disadvantage you'd like to give this character give them an advantage of a subtle observer okay is this somebody who typically watches over the sake house yeah or the child i was thinking the child of, they, they grew up in the sake house they're the child of the owners they are very good at noticing the people who come and go yeah. Into the sake house or into town. They know all the gossip yes. around. And, and they just, 
they're just a really good kind of being aware of people and what they say and what they don't say because of that background. It's not like court subtle observer, but it's still the same skill set. Absolutely. I like it. Cool. Very good. Thank you. All right, Mike. I'm going to go with little sister. Okay. All right. Positive or negative relationship? Positive. Very good. Do you want to put some more context around that? Basically, she's quite a lot younger, so she's still a kid. She also has to end up with a bit of a, a caring role because of the loss of the parent, how big this community is. Yeah. Yeah. So she's in many ways the heart of the place in a way. Yeah. That makes sense. Do you want to form a bond with this character? Yeah, why not? Sure. I think sibling is a bond. Yeah. I'm always, yeah. What advantage or disadvantage does your little sister know? Probably fear of failure. Ooh, I like that. I like that. What is an advantage or disadvantage that your character is aware of in your little sister? She is, I don't know how to phrase this, but she's really good. She really always wants to make other people happy and she's quite good at it. Cool. She's kind hearted. Yes. Okay. I like it. Thank you. Okay. So now what happens for me and my, uh, the rest of this workbook here is I get to create a strong start. Uh, this is typically like a hook rising action climax kind of thing. If you're talking about challenge focus strike kind of formats, except you sum it up into what's the first scene and then 10 secrets and clues. That's something directly pulled from lazy GM by Slay flourish and then create some fantastic locations. This being important detail, notable detail, used to be detail, just like the players did for their personal location. And then, uh, create some scenes at that point. That's all just the GM stuff. You don't really need to collaborate with your players on that. You can, you're more than welcome to, but I think they've done enough work just now in this past section. That was a lot of brain work, huh? It, it was, but it, it really, yeah. <laughs> I would say it really does fill out a lot more of the character in the setting. And it does a lot of tying the characters to the, the, the setting. And I like that. I really like more collaborative character generation with the GM, making it mm -hmm. tie into the adventure that they're looking at. I think that especially yeah. for sh short term campaigns. Yeah. As opposed to like huge long fix. Absolutely. Yeah. There's certainly a lot of information that's got a, there's a bunch of hooks and stuff to, to work with. It is. Yeah, it's a I, I can, I can so, sometimes there are things where I'm not, you, you sometimes in these things, you have to mush your character conception in order to have some of the, some, to have all of the things that are being, because some people won't necessarily have a location. Some people won't necessarily have, I struggle coming up with someone closest because I, I want, maybe my character isn't close to anybody. So I'm, I, yeah, sometimes it feel, it can feel a bit limiting and. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's, that's true of all of these kinds of systems. I think that's a very good point that you made and something I should probably consider. If you're not close with anybody, what's the advantage there? With a lot of them, it's like, who is this person you like? And you have to go, what if they say no? Or what is your, what is this person's greatest accomplishment? Is one of the toughest ones, especially with new characters. Mm -hmm. Cause sometimes it can be, yeah. like, maybe the, maybe not. And maybe there should be a thing for each when you come to that. And this is actually in the main 20 questions, not just your thing. Yeah. What happens if you, if, if, yeah, you, you, you don't want anyone to just go, nothing, nobody. Offer. That is precisely what I'm combating with questions. But I you do yeah. at the same time, I think have, want to have some flexibility for, I don't think that one applies to my character. I think the one assumption I had was that if you weren't going to choose another non-player character that you would choose another player character and it mm. wouldn't have to be something deep history like, oh, we met 10 years ago kind of thing. It could be like, we all met up and you just give me a really good vibe. So we have the wanderers, whatever bond. Yeah. Be a bit tough. Yeah. A little I, bit I mean, I, and also there is another thing which you, you, as a general kind of idea is sometimes I think a perfectly valid answer is I want to discover that in play. Yes, absolutely. Yes. In fact, that is exactly what I'm going to sidebar. That's a great idea. That's the fix, man. Thank you. 
me, but then no, it's... But certainly AFEX, it may not be the... AFEX, yeah. Because sometimes it can be that doesn't apply. But I, I think sometimes, again, this is true of the 20 questions from the core and pathways is I want to discover that from play, in play, I think should be an option for some of it. For this character, I think they've got a really good background to role play from. I have no idea what would be their most significant accomplishment. Mm. None. I'm, I'm, you know, they're coming in. Right. You know, they're coming from a legacy of failure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. a perfectly legitimate legacy, especially for a Ronin. So it's, I don't know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Something up cheap, but it, which could be okay. But There is one last question that I do need the player's help with. Now, this is something that it asks what excites your players the most. And what I, ha I have two different options. There's a short version. The long version is that I ask you for what would you like to experience in game? What are some like scenes that you can think of that like really excite you about playing your character? Maybe what's a legendary item that we can come up with together that you can obtain? Stuff like that. We don't have to go through that long process. <laughs> the short process is something that I also got from Primetime Adventures, where we create a movie trailer together and you state just a six second, super cool moment involving your character. As long as it's not debasing another character or killing another character, <laughs> then yes, you should be good. So I wanted to, let's make a movie trailer. <laughs> a really obvious one for my character would be up a tree, concealed in the foliage, making some completely absurd bow shot with the Ooh. ornate bow that he got from his father. Yes. I like that. And if I get to, because very often you get, you, you kind of juxtapose those, that will be him at home with his little kid saying, why do you have to go away again? There you go. And so it's from little sister. Yeah. I like that. Mind you, say anything you want. Whatever makes the final cut makes the final cut. Full freedom to be creative. Uh, I think for mine, it's going to be the character just takes a, a long drag out of the, the super long pipe. It knocks out whatever was in it with the heel of their uh, sandal. I forget the name of the term or the actual shoe implement. Mm. But just knocks out whatever's in it and just says, all right, what, one more job for the road. And then just whips a knife out of nowhere and, and lunges at the camera. Uh, okay. Nice. All right. So the one I had was my character meeting a couple of bandits outside of, or a couple of mercenary, other uh, Ronin outside of a, uh, a Saki house and them, uh, yelling at my character saying, yeah, how could you betray us? How could you even Ooh. do this to us? And my character stumbling back and like not saying anything back, but which isn't very cool. Do you know, I have a suggestion, which is the one that came up to my mind immediately was some like mystic fortune teller person, you know, read in smoke and looking at you and saying, you must confront your past. And then a shot of you, which is clearly a flashback of you coming, wandering out of the forest, looking a bit unkempt and confused. Like, I don't remember my past. I love it. <laughs> there you go. And again, you could use both. Ju juxtaposing these things can often really kind of make it. Yeah. Yeah. So their yelling is drowned out by. Yeah. What do you know about your past? I don't know my past. So they said. So they start the scene, my character's just like backing away and, and they're saying, you betrayed us. And then the question, who are you, where are you, you know, where are you from? What happened? You know, just start to get a chorus of those questions and, and, uh, then maybe the mysterious fortune teller, like these mm. origins, the answers are in your past. I think someone's got to be there for a humorous sidekick i think you are way more than just that's a humorous it. sidekick in this one this is pretty cool that's true i i always go for the character with the uh problems i like that anyway 
So that's officially the end. The other thing I wanted to point out to you is they have a juxtaposition or a contrast to the character question 20 in the player's 20 questions perk book. There is asks, how should your character die? But I ask, how do your characters live? Because yes, in the same way that how does your character, how should your character die? Probably informs your decision about playing. How do you role play in this moment with the end in mind kind of thing? Asking mm -hmm. how your characters live as a game master for each of your NPCs that you plan on including in that session, or maybe not, helps inform your role playing for what are they doing today to get their closer to their destiny or further away from their destiny from how they see things. So, did everybody have fun here today? This is definitely a character I would love to play. Nice. Yeah. So, what are you starting now? Nah. Let's go. I still have uh, plenty of hours that I can burn instead of sleeping. No. Maybe not today. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Were there questions that you had to go through that you're like, I don't really see the point in this one? Not in particular. Uh, everything but... seems like it ties in fairly well mm. or, or has the ability to tie in fairly well. No, I thought it I thought it covered everything pretty pretty well. I think it would have been better if I could see the questions on the screen and very visual. Mm. So I, I had a hard time yeah. keeping track of everything that you were asking and going on because I couldn't ever see what you were asking. I really wish and Discord was working today. Yeah, I wonder yeah, if I could have thrown it into World Twenty. Mm. Yeah. If you had put it in there as a sheet and made it as the background sheet, that would be great. Or if you there have been a lot of ways that potentially we could have done it, but it, that Good made point. it extremely difficult for me to uh, keep track of what was going on and then try and do that in addition to the uh, character generation that is in Path of Waves. Yes. Did you feel like having to do your own at the same time was difficult? I just, yes, frankly, because I didn't understand what where we were supposed to be when. And I have a hard time with character generation anyway, because I want to write oh, okay. the best story out mm. of it. And I want to make a good character for a game. But and those, you know. are, those are not necessarily the same thing, are they? Exactly. I got a great character story out of this, but, and it was fantastic for that. But let's, okay, I need to translate that into advantages. What advantage does my character have? That's in question. Oh, but we didn't actually do our character's advantages here. We just did passion. And then, yeah. okay, how does that tie back? I need to figure out an advantage. Mm. Do I do one yeah. tied in with this? Do I do one tied for the adventure we're going to have? This party seems to need some fighting, so I need a fighting. And there's just too much that goes into that aspect of it, doing it at the same time. In fact, I almost would like to do something like this as a you know, do the first couple questions. Yes. But don't worry about stats. Then do your set of character generation, then come back and do the rest of the... Absolutely. Um, I definitely should have stuck better to the order of the workbook because I did jump ahead a little bit at some point. <laughs> and just, as I said, seeing it on the screen for me would have been very helpful. Were there any questions on here that you felt like, I don't really see the point in that one, or... Has this at least been difficult doing your character questions at the same time as this starting question? I'm going to point that at Mike. Um, the, there weren't any that didn't seem particularly, that seemed pointless. Good. And yeah, m m moving back and forth. Yeah, I, that was a, that, I didn't mind that too much. Probably the yes. biggest was that, is that the character, the, the 20 questions on roll 20 is the standard one. And we all went for path of ways instead. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't even realize. That caused me a little yeah. tiny bit of confusion. Oh, sure. At one point, I thought I wasn't, because one of the questions changes number. Yep. Which is the pre-existing relationships one. Yep. So okay. my, yeah, because I, I was like, oh no, do I not get my guitar? And so I was like, where's that question? And it, that I think that's now question 17 or something. So that was a little bit weird. But that's probably the biggest confusion. Yep. I will definitely be looking into that. Yeah. Now. The one of the goals of this Game Master's 20 questions is that each workbook informs the other's decisions. And I feel like whenever I get to the part where it's GM only stuff that 
I am reflecting on what you guys have already said in order to answer. That is accomplished pretty well for me. I would like to try to get another GM to do this for their own players to see how they feel about it. But how did it feel as players? Did it feel like some of the questions that were in my workbook helped you think about questions you have yet to answer or questions you have already answered that you got to expand? There is one question for me that allowed me to expand upon something I had already looked at. And I think that was the, the location one. Like what is a location that you like? Because again, I had the passion of generosity and I was like, how, what would be a location of that? And it just let me build it out and be like, there's an orphanage. Go along that route. And they can build that up. And that kind of started establishing more of my character's personality, which I helped out later on because, okay, who would take advantage of a generous person? Obviously a scorpion actor would be a perfect example of that. How do I do that? Okay. Then start building that out. Oh, um, and it, it, for me, it led from one location to the next. And I really like that. I like that. Jeannie, did you feel like the questions I was asking in the in my 20 questions, helped at all with informing your decisions for your 20 questions. Oh, absolutely. The location one was a particularly good one, too. I, I definitely agreed with that. And knowing the... Uh, I think it made a huge difference because knowing some of the bad NPCs or some of the NPCs that you were planning on using yeah. obviously was a big driver for the entire character I did. The whole character yeah. is based around that basically. Absolutely. How did you feel about that, by the way? Did it feel like lifting the curtain to something you shouldn't really be privy to? Or did it feel like this is really collaborative? It was very collaborative. I, I like being able to tell the story as a story. You need relationships between PCs and NPCs, but it's so easy when you've got a whole party of people, the NPCs, and they're just like, I'm going to have a contact to a scorpion and a dragon and stuff, but you don't know what the GM <laughs> had planned at all. Yeah. Then it's the GM will never get to this. So it's like not relevant. But if you can say, oh, the GM's got this, I can figure out how they can connect to my character here. And yeah. then you're working together with the GM on it and what will be included or has a much better chance. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Mike, how about you? Did you feel like the questions I was asking helped inform your decisions on your 20 questions? I'm honestly not very sure. Uh, okay, that's fair. Yeah. I was playing a character who's cut off from everyone else and only getting involved in this adventure because they, they feel they have to. Yeah. To get some money to, to help to, to get on with what they really want to do. So the stuff about the location and, and who you're most closest to and stuff like that, but I think that did as well. That did force them to taking the most home. You bring up a good point, though, because you mentioned earlier that it felt like either these questions were trying to, to restrict you in some way. Or, or at least at least apply a specific template, which admittedly is something that 20 questions does anyway. Yeah. And, and it must be said that I've said quite a lot that the 20 questions is really good for making sure that you will come up with a character who does fit in Rock Again for someone who does not necessarily know that much about Rock Again and thus needs a certain amount of templating. And it's only after you've made a few characters, I think, or, or at least played for that you can start saying, okay, now I know how I can make a character who would not necessarily fit properly within the 20 questions, but would still be workable in Rock Again. And I think that is also going to be true of the GM's 20 questions, because it might be that once someone has made a campaign or a couple of one shots and all that kind of stuff, using that framework, then yeah, even if they say, well, this framework's very limiting, but once they've done a couple and they can say, ah, right now I see, now I've got more experience, I can then make up stuff that don't quite fit, that won't fit this template or yes, this, but still will fit. But for just starting out when you're not quite sure, I don't know what's the best skills to get and what the best rings are. Cause I just haven't played the game enough. Yeah. So having a thing that just says, look, you know, you're going to have some airing. Don't fuss too much about if that's the best or not. It'll, yeah, you know, you'll come up with a, a character will come out the end of it that will work to at least some degree. They'll work well enough 
and then you'll play a bit and then you're going to start end up getting opinions about what you can do outside of that so i think the your, the, your gm's 20 question doesn't have to enable you to do absolutely any campaign right off the bat it, 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 it is perfectly reasonable for you guidance for people who don't know what to do and want to have something that will end up with a whole bunch of stuff that will help and make a campaign and once they've made one or two maybe they don't need that guidance anymore but they wouldn't have got to that place they didn't have the guidance the first time around yeah that's absolutely fair i think one also thing to add in to here is that the gm20 questions almost have an expectation of knowledge of Rokugan to an extent just with the nature of how the questions are tying you into the setting itself mm. so for at least the the gm should have more knowledge of Rokugan than above average i should say just to make sure that the tone kind of fits thematically and such which is not necessarily a, a, a bad thing but it could be a little bit of a limiter for anyone first experiencing the system if it's a group of, of players and GM that have never played L5R or have never gone into working on, it could seem a little weird to an extent. That being said, I, I think if anybody in the group has knowledge of working on, you can easily have that guide along. But yeah, I, I yeah, think yeah. it's almost a little bit of an expectation there. It's, well, let's be fair. That's the problem with L5R in the, in the huh. it's, it's very difficult to, to really start from scratch. Sure, very true. It is difficult, I think, to, that onboarding process is always going to be difficult. Yeah, I would be very interested in maybe trying this again with whoever is willing to try it again, to do something that is uh, completely off the beaten path. We did, we, We're, like the whole thing of us saying, let's do a Celestial Realm true. adventure yeah. with Path of Waves characters. So we And it's super zoomed in, it's a small cast, like... Mm. You don't have to know what every clan does because you're only dealing with three. Maybe yeah, you're dealing yeah, with the scorpion yeah. and maybe lion. That's true. Cool. I really like it. The first time I ran this, it was interesting because half of the adventure was going to be Wheel of Fortune. No, it's uh, the one where you die and you have to come back to or you can come back to life. Half of it was a pre made launching. Wheel of Judgment. Thank you. So half of it was that. And then half of it was going to be custom to get them to that situation where they get axed. And I was... Yep. Question yeah. 20, how should your character die? Question 20. How... <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, I felt like they worked pretty well. So I would be interested in seeing for like alternate versions of Rokugan or something flexible as the system really. I think I might experiment with that a little bit more. Cool. I really appreciate y'all sharing four hours of your day with me. Thank you very much. Definitely. Yeah, that's yeah. fun.